Oh great, so now that I'm at base camp, we're also having a storm. Check this out. Oh look guys, it's a pretty day at base camp. Or is it? Not again. So I came back to Texas so that I could get my van fixed and I had to go through some pretty gnarly West Texas weather to get here. I get back, have a couple of good days of cool weather. It felt wonderful. Just been doing some projects, showing you guys cool stuff that I've been up to here at base camp. And look at this. No guys, that isn't it just getting dark for the night. No, no, that's another storm. You know, being at the end of Tornado Alley just keeps on like digging its little ugly finger in a little bit more every single time I'm home, it seems. So today has, has been an interesting ride and it's gonna continue to be an interesting ride. As, as you can see the storm, it's not fun. So I think what we're gonna do today is go inside and instead of shooting a video out here talking about preparing for the journey again, I think I'm gonna show you guys something kind of cool now the weather outside is looking pretty crazy I, I don't know that it fully translates just how crazy it looks but that is actually a divider line of clouds and that's usually what's really bad in texas so while i keep monitoring that on my weather apps actually let's get one more look i'm gonna go over to this side of the tree line so we can get a better view of what's coming because um you know, just in case things have shifted. Now, I will say this, whenever I have been here previously, I have pretty much learned whenever you have a warning to just kind of start looking around to check the clouds. I did that. As you can see, it's super dark and there's lightning and stuff in that direction that is north of me. So the thing that I always do is then I check to see if one, did you just see that? There's still birds. That That's a good sign, guys. When you see birds still, that means danger is not imminent right here, right now. But I also checked what's coming. If you look at what's coming and you look at the clouds, you can see where the wind is taking those clouds. Now, in the case of bad weather, if you see that those clouds are starting to kind of start to circle, that's very bad. But also, if you see that those clouds are starting to move towards you, that means this is coming towards you. Now, currently, the clouds are pushing away and in that direction. So I feel safe and I don't feel like I need to take shelter or anything. So I think it's okay for us to do a little something to pass the time and keep us a little alert. So um, while we're staying vigilant, while we have weather notifications on, now it is time. Now, for those of you who have never been through any kind of tornado watch or warning before, let me explain. First and foremost, watch. That means that there is a potential of a storm in your area. And that means you should be vigilant about checking the weather. You should also have just in case supplies. We've talked about preparedness several times on the channel. You should always have the things kind of prepared for this time and maybe start moving them into a safe space just in case. You should also make sure that your phone is fully charged at this time or that you have a battery backup because this is what you're going to need to be able to see if it goes into a warning. A warning means that there has been rotation and that there is something that is either dropping or is about to drop and you need to seek shelter immediately. You need all of those things to be in place for you to be in a place where you know for a fact that you're going to be okay. So if you do have like a a storm shelter or a cellar or a basement or an interior room without windows. This is the place that you want to be during this time so that you can, you know, be safe with your entire family. If you don't have one of those things, you're supposed to get into a place in your house that you can seek cover. Now, a lot of people, if they have a bathtub, will hide in their bathtub and pull a mattress over them so that they can be safe. Now, one thing I will tell you guys, wherever your safety place is, let a family member know where that is so that if for some reason you get trapped there, they know where to look. It's so important to know where you last were or where your preparedness spot was. Well, guys, as soon as I was about to unleash the box, we started getting rain. It appears that Another band has come up and it's right over the tree line there. You can see it's clear in the direction that previously there were clouds and it's actually moving this way. And the rain is coming down 
hard now, like super hard. Now base camp has a tin roof, so it's kind of loud inside base camp. But um, still, we're not supposed to be in the storm's path for the bad stuff. You know, be it on the road or be it at base camp, there's never a dull moment for me, it appears. I've been working on projects here just all day and the weather's been great. And then all of a sudden this is going on and it's like, oh no. This is insane, guys. We went from, no, it's just gonna be a thunderstorm to yes, potential tornado to no, it's just gonna be a thunderstorm. Do you hear that? That's hail. This is not good. Things have shifted badly. Okay, I'm grabbing all of this and I'm gonna go shelter in place because this stuff is super important. This is literally how I work. So it needs to go into my shelter with me. So into my shelter I go. Okay, so we are now in my shelter area. My shelter area is my closet because my closet is the most interior space. Now, one of the things that I never enjoy is whenever a storm comes through and things change, first and foremost, the sound is terrible when I'm at base camp because it's on a metal roof, but also when I'm in my van, it's the same thing. So I always try to just like buckle down. Sounds like it's lifting a little bit. That could be good or that could be bad. Oh, guys, I just wanted to do an unboxing with you guys. I'm not gonna do that in this video. This definitely took a turn I was not expecting. Wow. Yeah, this, this is not fun. I do not recommend. If you happen to be in Texas ever and in, endure one of these moments, you'll understand the emotional roller coaster. Like I said, things had passed, but Texas has a way of changing its mind. And even though the clouds themselves for the tornado have all gone in the opposite direction, apparently there's another cell that mustered up the courage to become something that was south of us that wasn't even showing up on the radar a while ago whenever we were first talking. <sighs> so I'm just gonna sit here for a bit. <sighs> All I can think of is the fact that outside, everything is probably getting destroyed by the hail. Things are slowing down a little bit and you can see there's dad's van right there and the rain is just coming down strong. Now we have some lightning also, but it appears things are becoming a little bit more okay after several minutes. The thing about it with these storms is you never know how long they're going to last, nor do you know how long you're going to need to seek shelter. So after everything kind of slowed down, I waited and then I came out and here I am and I'm just looking and we still have quite a bit of wind, but it's nothing in comparison to what it was. <sighs> Not fun, guys. And I have the air on inside and it is sticky. That's another sign. When you feel everything go, ugh, like it's suffocating you because it gets so, like, for lack of other word, muggy all of a sudden, even with your air conditioner on, that's not a good sign usually. So I'm wondering if there was another storm cell that produced something. It doesn't look like it was here producing a tornado from what I can see. And I'm just kind of looking out the window as I'm talking to you guys, but I don't know if we're out of the woods yet. So I'm gonna check the weather apps. Okay, um, we're popping our head outside for a second. Wow. It just flooded my entire yard in like just a few minutes. Oh wow. Before I was able to stand on the porch and it wasn't wet. Well now it's soaked and I have a lake in my front yard. That's how quickly things can progress when you're in one of these crazy storms here in Texas or anywhere for that matter. Wow. Yeah, this is 
this this is what we just endured right here i'm gonna have to check the vehicles after it's safe just to make sure everything is good but i definitely need to check dad's van because he parks it down here by my house but i won't be checking anything just yet it is still going out there and i'm not trying to go out there and get hit by that stuff that is not fun now that's pretty small in comparison to what it was producing just north of us with the actual tornado it actually got up to tennis ball size so i'm very grateful that we did not experience that but the storm is not over and this seems to be a different cell so it could have the potential to do that so i'm just going to keep monitoring it now i think this is a good time to just kind of sit and talk to you guys for just a few minutes while we're seeing what's happening about what you can expect if you are in a storm like this, if you're not in a sticks and bricks and you are in fact in your vehicle. I've done a video about this before, but every year I feel like we need to do a reminder just to let you guys know just how serious it is. That hill right there could cause vehicular damage. That vehicular damage while you're on the road could mean that your vehicle needs to go immediately into the shop if it busts out your windows or if it busts out your lights because you can't drive in those cases. So knowing a plan for what happens if you are in your vehicle while that happens, super important. There are a few things that you can put over your windshield to kind of protect it a little bit, but in all reality, those are not the greatest because a strong gust of wind could still rip them away. So any of the covers, I'm not gonna suggest those, I'm just not. Um, a lot of people think that if you park under an underpass that you'll be safe. The highway patrol says do not do that ever in a case of a storm. Now, last year, whenever I was really thinking about this, because I never really put a lot of thought into it, I asked a highway patrol, I asked a person from the Department of Public Safety, they all said the same thing. Overpasses are not the way to go. Do not park under them because what can happen is they kind of form a vacuum for things to scoot through, which could mean that you are sitting as a sitting duck for projectiles. Not to mention in worst case scenarios, some overpasses have the likelihood of being able to collapse. They do not recommend you being in one of these areas or parking and then getting out and running up to the top of it. No, no, no. Instead, what they recommend is if you are stuck in a storm like this, to pull over immediately, get into a low-lying area, and protect yourself the best that you can because you are less likely to get sucked up into the tornado or be impaled if you are in a low-lying area. Now, with that said, it doesn't come without its own set of challenges. For example, some of those low-lying areas are drainage areas. So if you get this much rain, like I just got right here, that could also cause some problems. So is there a true one way to avoid this? Not really. But in Texas, we do have safety shelters, which are much more reliable. So if you can get to one of those safety shelters, which is basically like a really strong rest stop, this is the way to go. It's a very good way for you to seek shelter. Now, if you are in a sticks and bricks like I am, again, we talked about safe spaces. Tell your family where you are. Make sure that you have the things that are important to you to be able to survive. If you are underground especially, you could be covered up. Make sure that you have a way to have some food. Mountain houses are great. Having a power station down there is excellent and keeping something like a road pro cooking device if you don't have any mountain houses with some like canned goods or something super good idea definitely recommend don't forget water though all of these things are so important oh man i can feel my heart just a pumping now and you guys can probably tell by the speed of my voice in this video things went very south very quickly man i'll be happy when tornado season is over but will it be over? That's the real question. The world around us is changing and now tornadoes are popping up in places that they have never experienced tornadoes or have very infrequently experienced tornadoes. So you're not safe anywhere, even if you're not in Tornado Alley. They just had one drop in Florida. They've had them in LA. Like what? So um, yeah, this is our new reality. Oh my gosh. Look at the pileup of all of this hail. This is ridiculous how much hail this really is. And I'm safely assessing dad's van from the doorway and it doesn't look like any shatters have happened. So that's good. Now we won't be able to tell what exactly is going on with the body until we have better light. But as of right now, I think he's in the good. Now, another tip that I have for you guys is if you know that there's a storm coming at all, do not park under a tree, period, the end. Don't do it. There's a few reasons for this. One, lightning strikes trees more often than you think. Two, 
branches fall really frequently, especially on some of these big boys that have fragile branches. Uh, we had a whole tree uproot in a neighboring community and just got completely decimate somebody's fence and car. Don't park near a tree if you can avoid it. Um, it's just bad news bears. Also though, personal story. A lot of you guys might have been with me since the beginning of my channel. And if you have, you know I started off in a silver car. This silver car took me on my first adventures. It was wonderful, I loved it. However, I parked under a tree and there was a lightning storm. Now the lightning did not hit the tree itself, but it hit a nearby post that had a line buried under where my car was parked. And because of that, it conducted the electricity all the way up into my car and fried my electrical system. It was not fixable, we tried, we tried, we tried. We had the computer replaced, we thought that would fix it. Nope, I was going down the road and all of a sudden all the gadgets and gizmos started going off again. We took it back in, they ran all the codes, again, replaced other stuff. Again, same outcome, the radio would turn on and then all of a sudden it would just turn up and then turn off. Um, the windshield wipers, the blinkers, everything, bad. So after that, I ended up having to get a different vehicle. And I ended up getting one that had no power, anything, so I could avoid having this ever happen again. Which is why for the longest time, I drove around the black car. The black car was awesome. The little roadrunner took me on, again, so many adventures. And until I got my van, that was my main adventure vehicle. Whew. You know, I learned a lesson from that though. I learned that as much as trees are a safe haven and they give you shelter from the heat, sometimes they can be very scary. And so parking under a tree anytime near where you might have lightning or any kind of storm is a big no-go for me going forward. Okay, now we are getting the rumblings of thunder in that direction. I think it's moving away from us again. We are still getting rain, but it's not the crazy rain. And it actually smells fresh now. I think that's a good sign. We're crossing our fingers that it is. So you might be saying, well, what happens if I am in the forest and there's no avoiding the trees? Well, in that case, again, revert back to what the DPS said. Find the safest place that you can think of. For example, a low-lying area. Make sure it's not in a path of water. Just find the best place that you can, and if it is possible, cover your body with something, something big and durable. For example, whenever I go to my safe space in there, I stand in my closet, and um, that's usually a good safe space for me to start with, but if I know that I get another warning on my phone, I pull my whole mattress up and make sure my mattress is sitting on top of me because it has a cushioned layer. Should something happen, that is a bigger, bulkier layer to protect me. And it's not optimum, but it does in fact work. So find something that you carry with you in your vehicle that you can save yourself with. Avoid windows if you can. If your van has full windows in there, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So get a little further potentially away and create a shelter for yourself. Drag out your mattress, do something. Do not stay in the vehicle if you are in an area that you know that there is no way that you can be safe. But also, don't just go running out there like, ah, I'm gonna be saving myself. Have a plan, discuss your plan, contact someone at the DPS or the Forest Service and ask them what their strategies that they would suggest are. And this does not just apply for tornadoes, even though tornadoes and bad weather like we just experienced are what we're talking about today. Find escape routes. Know the area that you're in. Don't just rely on your Google Maps because in cases of storms, guess what? Sometimes your phone just won't work. Have a physical exit plan in all situations. If you're staying at a truck stop, know if there's a safety shelter there. If you are staying at a national forest and there are no structures in sight, what are you gonna do? If you are staying at a state park, do they have a building that they would recommend that you take refuge in? Know all these things by just making a simple call or just doing a little Google search to investigate. This could save your life. <sighs> I think I'm gonna calm down now a little bit. The storms seem to be passing. The vehicle seems to be good. Everything seems to be okay. And um, I now feel like I can confidently go get my computer out of the uh, shelter area. 
Again, I know that you guys are probably like, oh, you took your computer. Um, yeah, I did. That is my entire job right there. All of my hard drives, all of the things that I do, all of the things that I need are going to be with me. Now, am I going to hold on to them if they're blowing away in the breeze while I am in the storm shelter? No, but it is more likely that they will be safe if they are with me in the space. And a lot of times if I'm wearing a backpack or something specifically, I will shelter in place with that thing because I'm in a physical home. Now, if I were out in the wilderness, no, I would not take them out into the wilderness with me. They would just chill in the van and hope for the best. But that isn't the case when I'm here because my exit strategy here and my safety strategy here is very different than it would be in my van. Man, I just wanted to do an unboxing with you guys and see what happened. So, um, coming soon, dot, dot, dot. Normally this is where I say we're not here for a long time, but we're here for a good time. But today was not a very good time. So, uh, I'll see you guys next time and maybe it'll be a little bit more calm. I sure hope so. <laughs> Bye. Mm, it's the next morning. I survived. Nothing is damaged. Okay. The next video, I, I really will do the unboxing. I just have to figure out um, if I'm awake or not yet. So, um, coffee time. And then I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>